Hello YouTube, Zmanzilla here, and I am staring at the floor of a grid room right now. Uh, don't ask me why, it has nothing to do with today's video. But um, I've been asked some questions recently about how, about specifically Blinky Geo and how to prevent it. And, um, you know, it's a, these are all very good questions, and it brings up a couple things I've always wanted to bring up, not just about you know, blinking geo and how to prevent it, but some design philosophies that could prevent it from happening in the first place. So anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at what I got here. So yeah, the big surprise is I've done nothing in this room yet. Uh, the only thing I've done is my usual uh, gameplay settings where I like to set the leaderboard button to false. That's just, you know, or to do nothing. Uh, and I just gave myself a preemptive player loadout thing. So uh, I haven't really done anything with it yet. But what we're going to be doing here today is uh, we're just going to do uh, first some rudimentary skyboxing. Now, the, the specific question I, or the specific problem I was presented with was a problem with skyboxes, how to keep the skyboxes from blinking. And so uh, let's go ahead and just grab ourselves uh, a blocking volume real quick. And now uh, here's a couple things to keep in mind when you're doing your skyboxes. First of all, no matter what thickness you make them, um, they will always just look like infinite sky. So that's that's important, you know. I mean, the, the thing is that it doesn't have to be, um, you know, it doesn't have to be you know, one that it doesn't have to be huge, super thick. At the same time, the other thing is it doesn't have to be super thin either. Now, I'm going to set the depth on this to 25. Now, let's go ahead and we're going to set the width to, um, I, I like nice round numbers, and I'll show you why in a second. We're going to set the width to 2,000. We're going to set the height to 2,000. All right. Now, um, real important, by the way, you have the ability, uh, when you're not pointing at your cursor at anything, you have the ability to look at your module properties, and, or excuse me, your settings, excuse me, uh, and you'll notice the very first thing on your settings is your grid size, okay? Now, I like to set my grid size to about 5 for defaults. Now, you can also set it as high as, like, 20 to 25, or you can set it much higher than that. You can set it as high as you want. But, you know, for course adjustment, I go with 25. And then for fine measurements, I go with 5. And the reason I like 5 is because it's pretty much the smallest unit at which you can space things out and still, like, sort of keep an even kind of thing going on. Whatever factor you like is good. But you really you really want to start learning how to use the, the grid size thing. And you got to make sure that, like, whatever your small number and big number are, you know, for doing fine and course adjustment, you want them to, you want one to be the, a multiple of the, of the other. So, you know, for instance, for my fine adjustments, I, I do a grid size of five. All right. And then for course adjustment, I do 25. So, uh, so when you're doing skybox though, a good place to start is with grid size five. Now, um, and then I, I keep the Z grid object mode enabled because I want it to be able to snap up and down as well. Um, so, and then, uh, where is it? Uh, yeah, snap type, you know, I believe you can pick origin or midpoint. I like to pick origin. Um, the angle snap increment is also an important one. Um, 15 is a good place to put it. Uh, uh, 45 is also good. Um, I mean, 45 is quicker, especially if you're just building perfect squares. 15 is good for, you know, you got basically eight directions you can go with that. Um, but you really want the... You want the you, you want to keep in mind that you know ninety degrees is you want you want whatever you pick to be directly like ninety forty five fifteen numbers like that that are more sort of like work better with angles so uh, you know it, and if you go much smaller than that just make sure you're you know it, it's it go five you know I mean to really get some fine adjustment going on but by and large you want to keep that angle snap increment sort of copacetic with the way actual angles work uh, otherwise things are just going to go all over the place and then the other thing i like to do is let's see where it is um lock placement rotation uh, i like that on uh, the reason why is because as you're moving around when you're holding uh, an object and you, say you turn your camera you don't want the entire object to turn with you you want it to keep the same angle all the time so i like to turn the lock placement rotation on and so you know so basically what's going to happen is okay i pick this up and then notice as i turn that it's still staying lined up with the grid lines now if i had lock placement rotation off turning this way would kind of just make the entire object just sort of point in a random direction and we don't want that so okay so that's step one have your grid set to a good angle 
Uh, step two, um, and this is a personal opinion, and you can feel free to disagree with me on this one. Step two is don't feel like you have to build right up against the wall. There are very few situations where you actually have to build up against the wall, and we'll cover those in a bit. But you know, here's the thing: look at you know, be realistic about the amount of space you have in a grid room. I mean, it is actually pretty huge. I mean. You know, like it, it is so huge, in fact, that if you spawn, uh, you spawn a player like way over here, and then you spawn a demon in that other corner, that other demon ain't even gonna pay attention to you until you're like halfway across the room. These grid rooms are huge. Don't feel like you have to use every square inch of it. You know, I mean, unless you're doing like a just huge, huge build, don't feel like you have to be right up against the wall the whole time. So, that said, if you do have to be up against the wall the whole time, uh, that's where your grid kind of helps out. And another thing, and this is where we come to tip number three, you'll notice I haven't actually applied my skybox yet. Alright, and here's why. Now, okay, so what I've done is I've, I've I, by leaving it in transparent, I have very clear lines that I can use to figure out where I'm at. And now, and we just make some fine adjustments here. All right. Now, when, you, when you're holding on to an object and you lift it up, you know, you push, uh, I don't know what this is on PC, but I know on P, uh, PS4, and, or at least on Xbox One, if you push down on the D-pad, it automatically drops you to the floor. So uh, what I like to do, is I get it right about where I want it, I press the, I believe it's Y to sort of line it up to the grid, and then down. And that gives me a good idea of where it needs to be. So again, Y down. And now, um, I, I like to try to do all of this sort of fine adjustments uh, there. You want to get it sort of like to there. You know, you don't necessarily need to get it right into the corner. Especially because, you know, with skyboxes, again, I like to work thick. So... You know, now you'll notice if you try to get it too close to the corner, it actually won't drop to the ground using that method. So, um, which is actually a good thing. But what you want to see is you want to see all those lines inside the grid room like that. So now, watch this. All right, we get our second piece here, and bring it on over. And now. When we intersect these two pieces, you'll notice you have some very clear lines to show you where uh, where the intersection is. So you can see now this is this is how the pieces intersect. You know, now I'm not getting a very precise snap here for some reason. That's interesting, but but all right, there we go. Probably because we're too close to the wall, but there you go. So that, now you can see they're they're pretty doggone close. You know they're nice. They're interlocked together. You can clearly see they're not touching the wall. And then after you get your, you know your your bits and bobs kind of where you want them and stuff, that's when you go through and do your skybox. You know, see one of the things I constantly see people doing is they they convert their thing to skybox and then they try to place it. Don't do that. Like, you know, d you know, just keep it uh, clear like this so that, you know, when you're putting things on the ground, you know, you can clearly see where the dividing lines are and stuff. And the other thing with Skybox is, again, it doesn't, you never have to worry about it doing the weird blinky uh, intersection thing. So, you know, you can even kind of lock it together if you want. You don't have to, uh, you know. But I mean, see, it'll it'll edge up just fine if you're using, like I said, if you're using a a good grid snap measurement, like five, they'll they'll snap right together, you know. And especially if you, like I said, these are these are all two thousand wide, which is a multiple of five. So as long as I'm using five as my my grid snap measurement, and, and I make all of my measurements a multiple of five, like two thousand, then all of my stuff's going to edge up like this. And because I haven't turned it into a skybox yet, I can clearly see that edge, and I can clearly see my intersections. You know, um, you know, do you know? Apply the skybox effect last. And yeah, if you if you're going through and skyboxing an entire, you know, thing, uh, then yeah, it's going to be a little time consuming to do it the first time. Which brings me to tip number four. Now, we have been doing this 
is as as much as this is the easy way to do things, we've actually been doing more work than we have to. And the reason why is because um, we are in Snap Maps, my friends. And one of the nice things about Snap Maps is you only technically have to do any job once. So, for example, I can go into I can go into the edit mode for Devil City Ransom. Okay. Which is a map I made that has a skybox in it. And I can just copy my old skybox and put it in a new uh, grid room if I want to. And that will work. Now, the best part about this, that I can sit here and say, oh, well, gee, I only had to do it the once. Um, I didn't even have to do it the once. You see... Uh, Devil City Ransom's skybox was actually copied from a project I'm working on with Void Runner. This is Void Runner's skybox that I copied from a Void Runner board and put in one of my boards. And there are dozens, at least, I mean, at least dozens, would you believe hundreds, thousands maybe, of other boards, of other snap maps, where people have already gone through and done the hard work of skyboxing their walls and ceilings to make things fit precisely. And, you know, and even then, I kind of screwed things up a little bit. Like, uh, you can see over here in the corner where there's a slight seam. But it's a corner where you're never at. So, but the idea is you, you get... You know, you can get the parts from another map that's already done the work for you and just copy and paste it in. Now, if you're not sure how to copy and paste a whole bunch of stuff at the same time, basically you just, you know, you, you have a copy button on the on the Xbox One, it's the right trigger. I think it's the same one on the PS4, I'm not sure what it is on other stuff. But anyway, you just go through, you just hit that trigger, you can hit it for all of them. You know, just go through, copy the walls, copy the ceiling. Um, and then once you've copied everything, you or once you've selected everything you want to copy, hold down that left trigger. You have an option there to copy. All right. You hit that copy and that says selection copied. And now you can go anywhere, like uh, even another map. Like I can I can completely uh, exit this map. All right. Yes. And then we go into a different map. And which is my offline map here, and you can just paste, you know, and you, you know, you, what you do is you hold down that left trigger to get to your options. You'll notice that A is paste, and look at that. There, there's the skybox. Now, it's a little clumsier to do with an entire room full of skybox. It's, but it's not impossible. So, um, and then you just got to put it down. Um, so, I mean, that's another way of doing it. You know, just. Uh, another another way again is if you go through and you do your skyboxing and you do it once, save that map. You know, just save that map uh, as as just a skybox map. Just call it skybox or something. Then later on, you can go save as, and then all you got to do is you can actually uh, select modules and duplicate them. And you know everything that's in the module is the exact same. So for example, there's all this. Now, if we go into the copy that I made, exact same thing, you know, exact same thing. So, you know, those are all ways of sort of dealing with the skybox problem. Uh, for all other applications where you do need to get up against the wall, and, you you know, that's that's basically a necessity. Um, so we'll, we'll grab a, a blocking volume here, and uh, let's give it, I'll give it actually a solid texture so we can kind of see better what we're doing. Um, but again, what this comes down to is just, uh, you know, um, using your grid to, to good effect. Now, you'll notice we're sort of a little over here. And if we try to come back over here, it actually won't touch. That is because our grid doesn't snap quite the way we want to at 5. So, you know, this is where we set our grid to 1. <laughs> you know, set your grid to 1, get in there, and as... You know, use your purple outline as sort of a guide there, and then you get it really close, and then you snap it. There you go. So, um, and then um, if you need to move it up and down, if you hold the right trigger, uh, you'll notice you while you have a while you have a you grab the blocking box. You, you and you notice when you hold down your right trigger to manipulate um, your left stick if you push it left and right actually allows you to kind of move it up and down. Don't be too close, though. But uh, once you get it sort of up against the wall as close as it's going to get, you know, back up from it a little bit, grab it, and use your stick to sort of move it up and down. And this will keep it sort of up against the wall without crossing that barrier. All right. 
and uh, your down is not going to work quite quite as right because um, the the sort of the down like the you push down on the D pad and it sort of snaps it to the floor. It doesn't work so great on these edges for some reason. I mean that's just always been a thing. But what you can do is just sort of manually, you know, and then. Um, you know, snap and place. And there you go. Don't feel like you have to build right up on the thing. Now, a couple advantages of giving yourself some space, first of all, um, are you don't, you never have to worry about blinking geo uh, if you, if you don't build right up against the wall. And the second is that you've got a, this wonderful place, the sort of back room, if you will, where like, say for instance, you, you build your, say for instance, you build your map with, uh, let's do this here. Let's, um, let's find dead center and uh, I will show you another like great application for this here. So let's um, let's go ahead and adjust our size to let's see that's going to be two thousand. Uh, uh, well, we want to go with uh, multiples of five because uh, again, that's a good grid is uh, basing it on fives. So we'll go with a width a width and a length of two thousand. We'll make our height. Um, I like two for floors. Uh, and then um, we uh, doesn't block players. Uh, yeah, block shots. Show on start. Static doesn't block. It doesn't block AI sight. Good. All right. Now let's find our let's find our center of room here. Um, so it's this one I want to say. So we take our take our diddly bob here. Wait, where we want it to be, but all right, there we go. Okay, so now this is 2000 by 2000 right here. This is already uh, a pretty good size for an arena right here, right? Like, I mean, you know, if you really, you know, if you closed it off and had a fight going on in here, you'd have more than enough room to do whatever you wanted to do in there. So, not that big a deal. Um, but let's go ahead and imagine that we wanted to go, you know, much bigger, like 4,000 by 4,000, for example. So, all right, so we'll, we'll get this where it needs to be. That's where it needs to be, please. Oh, that's right, I have the, I currently have the grid set to one, don't I? Hold on. Um, all right, so I may need to readjust things a little bit, but we'll, we'll get it figured out. Boop, boop, all right, and then line this up, boop, boop, there we go, boop, boop, and copy that, bring it on over, and what we end up with is a 4,000 by 4,000 area, which, again, is plenty big, you know, this is a huge space, you still have, look at all of this space back here. Imagine if you skyboxed this area in, right? You'd still have this nice big area to, to work with, right? But then you'd also have all this area back here where, okay, so for example, you know when you're playing like a multiplayer map and like the person that's not hosting can sometimes see your solid demons? Imagine if you spawned your solid demons back here instead. Uh, they, they wouldn't be able to see them. You know, you can hide all your code back here so it's not in the way while you're doing your building and stuff. You know, all your important code can all happen back here. You know, another idea is you could be using these areas back here for, like, little rooms that the, the players can teleport into. Uh, to Like, say you've got some buildings and they go up to a door and, like, you can just teleport them in here without having to, like, you know start up a whole other room and stuff you know definitely think about how you're using your space because you don't again you don't have to build you don't necessarily have to build up against the walls you can still have plenty of space without building right up against the walls so though these are all things to think about when you're skyboxing um but yeah i mean the the basic thing i would say is you know again don't you know make applying the skybox effect itself the very last step um is what I would say about that. So um, I hope that does answer all the questions here. If you do have any other questions, um, and then uh, go ahead and let me know in the comments. And be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.